Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Earthling Weight Loss. Thank you for tuning in again today. Today's video is a follow-up to a recent one I did on sodium and water retention. So if you haven't seen that one, you can press the little exclamation mark that appeared on this video and you can watch it there. So today's video I'm going to be talking about techniques that you can use to cut back on sodium so you can start to lose that water weight and feel more optimal. So the first step is one that you may have already taken, and this is to start eating whole foods that are plant-based. So this includes starches, fruits, vegetables, legumes, stuff like that. Sodium levels in unprocessed plant foods contain sufficient but not excessive sodium. Just like basically any other macro micronutrient, it's available in plant sources in the adequate amounts our body needs. So if you have already done this, then this is a great, great start. You're going to start to notice a huge improvement right away when you start cutting out animal foods and high fat foods from your diet, because these are the foods that contain high levels of salts. Meat by itself, even when it's cooked, doesn't have much of a flavor, and so we add a whole bunch of sauces, seasonings, and spices to make it taste good, because that's what actually is making it palatable, is the spices and salts. Same with high fat foods. So we don't actually find just fat by itself appealing, like you're not likely to guzzle a bottle of olive oil. But when it's combined with salt, it has that appeal. And so when you are cutting out overt fats and animal products, you are also cutting down on salt. And this is a great first step. But even animal products and high fat foods aside, our diets are still pretty concentrated in salt from a variety of other things. It's in sauces, canned soups, canned vegetables, Frozen meals, fast food, restaurant food. A lot of processed foods contain salt because they're made to be ready to eat and, you know, ready to satisfy you. Because the last thing, you know, a food business wants is for the customer to be unsatisfied and think that, oh, this is really bland, I don't like this. Oh, the, oh, the dog sneezed. That's cute. So your taste buds are probably quite accustomed to high levels of salt already. You could say that they're even a bit numb just because they come into contact with so much salt on a regular basis. And so as you start to eliminate salt slowly or altogether, your taste buds, because they're constantly regenerating, will soon be more than satisfied with lower salt intake. You know, you just have to give it a bit of time. So yes, just to recap, the first step is to stick to a diet based around whole plant foods, you know, cut down on refined foods because even if they're vegan, even if they're plant-based, they're still probably going to contain some salt. Okay, so the second step is if you do want to include some refined foods in your diet, which I think is fine as long as it's not the focus, then the second recommendation I have is to always read food labels. Things like canned soups, beans, and lentils often come in varieties that are no salt added or low sodium, and so you can always find them if you look. A lot of breads also contain sodium, but some of them do make the point of being low sodium and so just look for those, you'll find them definitely. Snack foods are items that really start to rack up the salt, just because when we think of snacks we either go for a salty snack or a sweet snack. And in my opinion, you know, snacks, the purpose of them should be to supplement your energy in between meals, and so you shouldn't be doing that by intaking a lot of salt and then all of a sudden you feel bloated and tired and, you know, kind of sluggish. Salty snacks aren't a really good option in my opinion. So I think that just fruits and vegetables are always going to be the best snacks. But again, you know, just to have variety in your diet, refined foods are okay. And there will be stuff like popcorn and, you know, low sodium crackers and cookies and things like that that you can definitely include in your diet. Yeah, just check the food labels. So the third recommendation is to prepare your food yourself so that you know how much salt is going into it. So going out to restaurants that serve vegan dishes isn't really going to help you out because I can almost guarantee that it's going to be a lot more salt and a lot more fat than you're going to want to consume. You're not really going to be feeling so great the next day. So definitely go to restaurants every few months to treat yourself, but at the same time, try to make your homemade meals you know, just so delicious and satisfying that you feel like you're really treating yourself every day. So finally, number four applies to if you'd like to completely cut out salt from your diet like I've done. So number five is make your meals with citrus, spices, herbs, and vinegars. I found that the best way to replace salt in my starch meals is to make combinations between savory, sweet, spicy, and sour. This way the flavors really dance with your taste buds and you don't crave salt. 
Here are some suggestions. So fresh or dried herbs will add a savory flavor. Herbs like basil, oregano, parsley, marjoram, tarragon, thyme. And chives are the ones that I think of being quite Italian flavors, and they really add a savory taste to your meals. You can also add heartiness to cook dishes with thyme, rosemary, and sage. All right, and then we'll bring in the spice factor. I personally don't like my food to be so spicy that I feel like my tongue is about to burn off, but having just a little bit of spiciness can really take the attention away from the lack of saltiness. Spices and seeds, whole or ground up, add a pungent aroma and spiciness. You can try coriander, curry powder, cumin, mustard seed, fennel, cardamom, caraway, chili powder, jalapeno seeds, and just black pepper for spiciness. Cinnamon, nutmeg, clove, and allspice add a sweet, warm, and spicy flavor. So next is sourness. Vinegar in salad dressings, sauces, and soups can really lift the flavor from being dull to being delicious. You can try red wine vinegar, cherry, cider, balsamic, tarragon, rice, white wine, and just plain white vinegar. Sourness can also be achieved with citrus, and so you can use the zest or the juice, and it can really brighten up your dishes. Some examples that I use personally are, say I'm making a soup, I'd like a balance of sweet, savory, and spicy. And so for sweet, I'm just going to add a little bit of plain white sugar. For savory, I'm going to add some basil. And then for spiciness, I'm going to add some black pepper and some curry powder. And this creates a real warm, sweet, spicy soup. That combo is really good for potato, sweet potato, carrot soups, because it really enhances the natural flavors of your vegetable ingredients. So I also make a really fresh tomato sauce all the time. I just use one tomato, three tablespoons of vinegar, and one tablespoon of sugar. I put this sauce on any starch, really, rice, potatoes, pasta. It tastes very fresh and tangy. All right, and finally, the last way of making your dishes really flavorful without adding salt is to use aromatic vegetables. So you're wanting to use vegetables that lend a lot of flavor and aroma to your starches. So foods like onion, garlic, leeks, celery, carrots, parsnip, ginger, lemongrass, shallots, and green onion all have really strong flavors that sink into starches. All right, and another quick suggestion is that some brands do carry products that are low to no sodium. So companies like Mrs. Dash sell shakers where you can just shake on the herbs and spices. And those taste combos that we talked about, you know, are kind of done up for you. Another brand that I've bought is Mr. Spice, and they sell sauces that contain little to no salt. I would recommend the ginger stir fry and the Indian curry sauce because those ones are so delicious. The main thing to remember is that at first your food may seem a little bland just because your taste buds aren't used to it. But after a time they will adjust and, you know, everything's going to seem that much more delicious because you're actually tasting the food, you know, for the first time in a long time. Because previously it's just been kind of numb from the salt. And taste aside, you're going to be feeling a lot cleaner and lighter just because you won't be holding on to all that water that salt causes your body to retain. I hope you found this video helpful. Be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Have an abundant day, Earthlings, and see you next video. Bye. songbird you've gone for growth or so the stone going out to restaurants that are serving vegan dish use so going out to restaurants that serve vegan dish use dishes dish use what so going out to vegan restaurants that serve vegan dish use just what the why do i keep saying dish use that is so weird.